This is Optimal Relationships Daily, Episode 680, Six Ways to Sway Your Family into a Life of Minimalism, by Zoe Kim with NoSidebar.com. Hello, everybody, and a happy Friday to you. I am Greg Audino, and welcome to the show. Every weekday here, I narrate some of the best relationship blogs we can find for you in an effort to help you maximize your own relationships. Also, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I host Optimal Living Advice, where I personally take questions from listeners about any struggle they may be going through, and offer them my best advice to get through it. It's a really great show if you're interested in learning about people and seeing how certain practices in life coaching and therapy can be put to use in daily life to solve problems. So you can check us out there and also send your own questions into the show that you need help with by emailing them to advice at oldpodcast.com. Advice at oldpodcast.com. We will take your questions there and answer them for you on the show. Now, Here in ORD land, as you may know, parenting content is usually featured towards the end of the week, and here we are. Now, it's hard to commit to a life of minimalism on your own, let alone getting your whole family on board. So today we're going to learn more from Zoe Kim on how you can achieve just that and start optimizing your life. Six Ways to Sway Your Family into a Life of Minimalism by Zoe Kim with nosidebar.com. You've discovered the more in living with less, and you want that for your family too, if you could just get them on board with your crazy minimalist journey. You may have just started, or you may have begun simplifying years ago. Maybe you've read up on ways to reduce your wardrobe, you've tossed the expired medicine from 1995, and pared down your living room decor. You've discovered that minimalism is a way to reduce the debt, stress, anxiety, and depression that the burden of clutter can create. And better still, you've discovered that minimalism helps you live a more fulfilling life. You're ready to dive in deep so you can cultivate more meaning in your family's life. But here's the thing, they don't see it like you do, obviously. When I started simplifying six years ago, I was met with resistance from a few family members. Through mistakes I made, I quickly learned all the things that didn't work and didn't convince them to get on board. In fact, my attempts to convince them cast their eyes further away from seeing my point. I never want my journey to simplify to become a wedge between me and what I value most, my relationships. When we have compassion and understanding for those we live with, we can hope to meet somewhere in the middle. If you're ready to convince your family that minimalism is right for them, try one of these six things that worked for me. Number one, stay with your own stuff. I think most of us know we need to start with our own stuff, but I've found it's best to stay with your own stuff, especially when family members feel defensive and resist the change to purge. Stay focused on your stuff until they decide to join you. Hopefully, it'll be this year. Number two, prioritize your nose. It's common to spend a ridiculous amount of time de-owning all our excess. After all, most of us have spent a decade accumulating it and we're going to have to give a lot of no's to other things if we want to get the job done. I've said no to many inconsequential activities like watching television and mindless web surfing on my phone so I could say yes to my minimalism and build better habits. Give your no's to the least fruitful aspects of your day. Let go of things that bear no purpose or joy, and you'll have more time to cultivate what does matter. Number three, meet their needs. What are the most meaningful things your family enjoys receiving from you? What's the one thing that makes each member of your family feel loved, seen, and heard? Meet their needs at least once a day. Maybe it's a hug in the morning or an intentional greeting upon their arrival home. Maybe it's keeping your monthly date night, exercising together, or serving a home-cooked meal around the table. When we keep those few things that are meaningful to our family, they're less likely to feel put out by your journey to become minimalist. Number four, keep your finger down. In the beginning, I did some finger pointing about our stuff. Not cool, I know. I wanted my husband and children to get rid of things right away while I still had stuff that needed to go. Finger pointing just leaves us going round and round. And as my grandmother always told me, every time you point your finger at someone, there's three more fingers pointing back at you. Number five, share your why. Share with your family why you want to simplify. Tell them the more part about owning less. Help them understand that you want to simplify your home and life so that you can spend more quality time with them. Give them specific examples. 
when I first started de owning, I would tell my kids sweetly that we would have less time at the playground because it took us so long to find what we needed to get out the door. Maybe you want more family camping trips, more carefree Saturdays together. Whatever it is, share that why with them. Number six, bring on the compassion. Get your family talking about other people and what they can give to those people. I've shared the thankful thread challenge with my children for the last few years. Conversations about the photos from where children sleep has helped change their perspective and open their hearts. My family and I are fortunate to have more than enough, and giving has been one of the most gratifying aspects of becoming minimalist. When my kids see me raise money for orphans, they want to give too. Draw their attention to the needs of others and encourage them to give. It's important to remember that people, even the ones you love and live with, may think you've gone off your rocker on this journey to minimalism. They may feel alienated and react defensively to demands to let go of their things. Telling them what to do with their stuff might only result in more bricks being stacked on their wall against minimalism. And as I remind myself, when you must choose between being kind and being right, always choose to be kind, and you'll always be right. You just listened to the post titled, Six Ways to Sway Your Family into a Life of Minimalism, by Zoe Kim with NoSidebar.com. And though we love minimizing here on the show, we know you still want to get your mom a Mother's Day gift, which is coming up. So have you been searching high and low for the perfect gift? Perhaps you want to get something memorable with a personal touch. The skylight frame is something that will bring joy to your mom, especially if you're not able to visit your loved ones as often as you would like to. Now, what is the skylight frame? It's a touchscreen photo frame you can email photos to anytime and from anywhere. It helps you and the whole family share all of your favorite moments with mom. The skylight frame can be set up in less than 60 seconds. It is so simple that even non-tech-savvy moms and dads will have no issues setting it up. Oh, and Skylight offers a full refund if you don't love your frame 100%. Now, as a special holiday offer, you can get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight frame when you go to skylightframe.com daily and enter code daily. That's right. To get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight frame, just go to skylightframe.com daily and enter code daily. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash daily. And thank you so, so much to Zoe. I do love minimalism posts, I must say. Uh, it's such a healthy way of living. But she's right. You know, just like with anything, even if we are completely sold on the benefits, that doesn't mean that everyone else is. So in making transitions for ourselves, we must be cognizant of not demanding others to do the same, certainly not loved ones. If we can bring these ideas forth with compassion and understanding of where others' values lie, we can live harmoniously with them, which, though it need not be the ultimate goal, will only incline them to pick up on our habits, whether they be habits rooted in minimalism or something else. All right? Thank you for coming by, dear friends. What would you like to do with your family this weekend, by the way? If you're on the lookout for something to do, try one of the tips in today's episode to encourage minimalism in your family members. There is a lot of great content in this post and in all posts from the week, frankly, so take advantage of it, okay? I will see you again first thing on Monday with a post on how serious hobbies can interfere with dating, where your optimal life awaits.